all their all their videos are basically like highlight clips, just like literal Twitch clips, and then just pour it in. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, what Sips does at this point as well. And that's unless you're already like someone with an audience, that's not gonna have, make you grow. People don't really want to look at that. Unless you already have an audience, then that's fine. Just like some of the big uh, the big YouTubers when they fun uh, start streaming or go to Twitch, you know their audience kind of goes with them. They don't really need to worry about going on Twitch. But you yep. don't grow by your clips alone, because the guys that just did that, did that, they don't really get more than one or two k of uh, you know uh, subscribers. And when you look at their viewer count per stream, it's it's difficult to to see them go over to like the ten or twenty. Which I'd say to me sounds like a fucking holy grail. Like I'd kill to have at least fucking ten or twenty. Holy shit! <laughs> but yeah, but honestly, I want to I want to give this as good as a try. So yeah, I won't be doing that. Obviously, the the one thing to get around this is you see if you do the, the wobble tactic where you heavily edit those clips, then suddenly it starts getting uh, you know it starts getting entertaining, and that's the shit people want. People want you to you know to have some effort put in. And that's where the, uh, the, the, the difference between YouTube and Twitch kind of comes into play. Twitch has a really low, you know, uh, standard when it comes to the quality of the product. Because all you're doing is basically sit, sit, sitting there, staying ahead of yourself, playing a video game and talking every so often. If you do something a little bit more than that, just put yourself like 5% above that standard bar, people are going to stay. The problem is that they can't find you. Yep. But you don't, you don't really need to overkill, you know, the quality of your stream. You, obviously, you should. You should upgrade when you can, but it's not, it is not required. YouTube, on the other hand, you're not going to get away with, uh, by placing subpar videos on that website. No one's going to fucking look at them. No yep. one's going to care. That's where you really need to shine. And so, yeah. The part that the YouTube channel, most of these guys have a absolutely groundbreaking uh, and over-the-top presence on other social media such as Instagram and Twitter so I've gone and made myself a Twitter account I'm not not gonna bother with Instagram because I just really don't care but I might in the end try it Instagram is more like a phone thing than a thing that you can also yeah. on PC but the, the, the thing about this what they're using it for it obviously some one guy went on record to say, "Look, you, basically what you're doing is you're you're building a presence on other social media and you're bringing that audience over to Twitch. So what you're doing is on your social media, on your YouTube account, or on your Twitter, the first thing you'll do is you'll make it very fucking obvious that you're a Twitch streamer. You don't do that by adding your Twitch link in every fucking tweet, but you do that by low-key referencing your you know, your your channel." Like uh, upload a funny clip on Twitter and have, have that little go viral a bit, and that'll do a lot of work because it's pretty easy to go viral on Twitter nowadays. Yeah, and no, on Twitter is really fucking easy. But that's yeah. because if you react to something or just like something, everybody will be able to just instantly see it. Yeah, so that's that's why I'll be trying Twitter first because I just have a little bit more experience with Twitter. Not because I've used it before, but just because I've heard so many things of it in the past. Instagram is kind of an unknown territory to me. My sister does a lot of Instagram, so I might as well consult with her. She I mean, also kind of started to do the same thing, where she wants to become an influencer, but she's using like a different like uh, Dutch game. But she has like a couple. She has like eight thousand followers on Instagram suddenly. So she, I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing it right. So I'll consult her to say, you know, if you can, she she become my uh, like my Instagram uh, teacher. It's something, something she's doing, you know, basically, obviously the, the specifics of what she's doing, that doesn't really apply to me, but the way she goes about getting an audience, the, the general picture is probably going to apply to anyone. Yep. If she can figure it out, I can figure it out, because she's using like this really weird Dutch game where it's all about horses. And obviously, the audience of that game is not as big as audiences from other games or audiences from English-speaking countries, at least. So if she if she can pull that off on a Dutch on a small little Dutch uh, game, I can probably pull this off as well on a you know on a more general scale. Oh, sure, okay, interesting. Yeah, the, the thing is though, you shouldn't pick a game that is like too far on like the top of the list as well on the yeah. games that are most watched. Yeah, because uh, th that's where game saturation comes in. I've heard one guy talk about this. 
is like on Twitch specifically. It doesn't matter too much on YouTube. In fact, it's the exact opposite of you on YouTube. But yep. on Twitch, at least, you know, if you uh, pick uh, one of the top games, you're gonna end up in a big fucking list where no one's gonna find you. Yes. Absolutely fucking no one. But you also don't want to play a game that nobody watches because no one's gonna click on the game. You need to find that middle ground. Like the game, the, the game that people are interested in, but they don't exactly. You know, they don't exactly have like a, a big streamer that covers it, so you'll want to become that big streamer. Yep. Another thing I've definitely heard that be, uh, be, being talked about is, and this is kind of annoying for me, because I was heavily against using this, but you know, I, I went and got the, the camera back for this specific reason, that you don't want to ever really turn off your face cam. Now, there are streamers that, you know, they did, you know, grow, uh, they did grow and they did you know, become pretty fucking popular without using a face cam, but they are the exception, not the rule. Yeah. The thing, about, the thing about streaming that people have to understand, and what I have to kind of understand, is people really don't watch the stream for the gameplay. The they gameplay is nice, they're watching you. They yeah. want to build a, like a, they want to build a quote unquote friendship with you. They want to, you know, watch their favorite streamer. They don't want to watch, you know, the bland ass gameplay. Yeah, this this is but, why I'm also switching with doing games so much. Yeah, so it started to kind of make sense as well. Like, yeah, of course that's that, that's why I watch streams. I don't watch streams for the gameplay because I hate that. I would rather you know play the game personally. Yeah, but, but here's the thing: the game. you search for the game, but you stay for the streamer. That's how I always uh, reference it. Yeah. So I've been working on, you know, getting that camera working. The, the camera, sadly enough, is really showing its age. It's uh, difficult to kind of use. The quality, of course, is great. So I'll try to kind of replace it as soon as I can. It will also... probably be the end of this month. Yeah, so that's also the thing when it gets to lighting. That is really hard with that camera. Yeah. I've actually solved the problem by, you know, and this is going to sound like the single cheapest thing I've ever done, but I just... I just pull off my phone, use this flashlight, and put, and put it against my screen, and that that'll do. I, if I just sit closely enough, it'll it'll just cover my face neatly enough that I'm not like this guy sitting in a dark room. But I've been looking at actual good cameras now. Obviously, uh, obviously, the one that people recommend the most, at least you know when you're starting and you want a cheap one, is the Logitech is C290, I believe. It's like it's basically like the the big brother of the the one I have at the moment. I need to look because that's that's probably the one that I have. It, it might be, yeah. It's 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 a really good like starting one, and I, I might get a ring light to accompany that. Because those are, you can get those for pretty cheap. Yeah, no, I do actually want the ring lights as well. Also, they just look really cool, don't they? The first time I saw them in any video, I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. I, I like how uh, during a stream from, I don't know who it was, but like one of the Yoxcast people actually had one and the one just broke. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw that clip somewhere still. Kind of around. Yeah, I think Lydia or something. Yeah, pretty, pretty sure it was Lydia. But yeah, another thing that I've kept I'm keeping into mind uh, to uh, our company, you know, the you know, they're watching the streamer, not the game thing. Obviously, now, I'm going to have to use the face cam. I'm not going to skirt around that now. I didn't want it, obviously, but uh, sure. I'll need to find a way to like so I can record just the gameplay as opposed to the overlay but it's a bit mad to find a plugin for that so that's good yeah the, uh, what i saw like when it gets to like uh slopes it does say that you can record over it without certain part i just haven't found out yet how that works because when i tried it it still captured everything yeah no you need like you need a plugin that's for, for as far as i've heard mm. but i need to do some, it is possible i just need to do a little bit more research uh to really make it to make it work yeah no okay uh, when you figure that out can you also help me then sure. because i i kind of like i do want the camera to stay in the youtube version i just some of the twitch uh things to just get onto it like the um event is and such i just want in recordings i'd much rather have them gone yeah, and uh, that's another thing I was keeping in mind with the, uh, when it came to the camera. There was a couple when I when I uh, figured out that okay, I'm not gonna get around the fact that I need a camera. 
how how best to apply one. Obviously, once you've got a a ring light, this is gonna you know stop uh, stop kind of working because preferably you want the ring light uh, with the camera in it, so you know, it's the optimal uh, the optimal lighting. Doesn't it, it doesn't always necessarily work that way because you know you see a lot of YouTubers or Twitch streamers do it uh, differently. Where they, instead of you know the, the, kind of the way you have it, where you have the, the camera like pointed just at your at your face fr from your uh, screen, the normal way you would you know, hold, use a webcam. Yeah, that, that's how I have mine slightly to the side. There are people that have it they need like on one of their screens. Yeah, I'm go I'm going to pr try to clip it to the side of my uh, left screen here, because I always kind of I personally like that angle when I'm watching something more. I'm not. I don't really. I'm not really interested in watching someone's forehead because the uh, the different angle kind of makes it feel more less like a webcam and more like a camera. Ah. Obviously, the, the quality that I've got, there, it's gonna scream webcam. I'm I'm not getting uh, around that for a while, and so that's why I really do want it to be on that different angle because it's just like a movie. Yeah, to the camera work or the positioning of the camera is just as important as the quality itself. That is true, yes. So, I'd, I'd recommend you do something similar as well. You have to uh, just put it to the side and maybe like, uh, not, maybe, you know, you might, maybe to the, on the top of your uh, left or right screen or maybe along the side of it if you manage to find a clip to go, that goes with it. I'm pretty sure that's like an extension you need to buy but they're not too expensive. But that usually at least you know as far as the face cams go they make it a little bit more natural looking because at the moment it really does it, it just has that webcam feel screaming at, at everyone that's watching well yeah also i just finally bought my fleet carrier Ooh. also also and this is one i think uh, that it's got to get patched as quickly as the uh, as Frontier figures this one out because this is a massive one. This is such a. There are such. There are a couple of uh, groundbreaking bugs that were get it set into the beta that really make you go, hmm? how the fuck did they miss this? Everything, but I mean everything that was used that used to be on the planet, uh, crash sites, outposts, uh, villages, uh, target sites, guardian sites. They've all been removed. At first, people were like, oh my god, this is a super nerf. No, this is just a super bug. They completely killed every planet. Now, there are people say that you know, they did this for Odyssey, but that just doesn't make fucking sense. No. I'm, I'm, obviously, the, the planet generation, they're going to change it. So I would, So when the time comes, I'm expecting planets to not really look the same, the same anymore, and maybe uh, like places you, 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 uh, you visit, they're not going to be there anymore or whatever but i'm not really thinking that you know they're gonna do that now besides why remove everything without t telling anyone about it so this is screaming bug but the second one obviously uh, the universal cartographics has been put uh, implemented into the into, a, into the fleet carriers during the beta it wasn't an original feature so it was kind of rushed in and it shows because at the moment if you deliver your data at the carrier it does not go away you sell it and then you can sell it again and again and again <laughs> oh wow so there are people generating billions and billions of credits at the moment and i'm about to become one of them <laughs> <laughs> and now I want to come online as well. The thing is that I'm first going to you know, test this for myself. I was already surprised I can actually go and buy myself a carrier now. And then I clicked on it and then I got the, the failed screen pop up. So there's definitely a lot of fucking weird shit happening. But I'm going to just go around, explore a bit and try to deliver it at the carrier just to see, you know, is, is, is this real? Or has it already been patched? Because I can imagine that the second Frontier finds out about this specific ground, uh, this specific bug. They're, they're going, going to fix it. it with all, with all they have. Because they don't get, hey, 
obviously, half of the game being broken. <laughs> yeah, that will take a while to get fixed, but you guys are earning money. No, 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 no. That's a big no-no, sir. But yes, I got it. The, uh, the K21 V8 M Lexington is finally now a thing. Carry services. But of course, the first thing we're gonna buy is Universal Car Graphics. Of course. But I need to actually be at the carrier to get it, because you know, even though you have the money in your inventory, you need to give it to the carrier and then buy it. You're you're, you're buying everything but the carrier's inventory. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Of course, uh, there's also delivery screen. I'll be applying a cool skin into that. You can also like uh, change the color of the landing pads, like the little the little numbers that show up which landing pads which when you're trying to land. You can change the color of those. Oh my! And the, there's like an air traffic control NPC that want, that's talking, the voice, and you can change that voice as well. And, ev and that, everyone should be able to just hear their voice then. So I'll get a cool one for that. Oh I've showed you the uh, the layouts for the ships that that is god fucking hideous. So I'll just be sticking to the base variant at least until they come up with some really cool layouts. But that might take a while because I'm expecting that these layouts, you know, they're not they're not going to be easy to make. Wait, what the fuck? So I just selected my carrier, went into Super Cruise, and it disappeared. Oh, there it is again. The, the servers are still not really agreeing with me here. Do you think it's already been updated on uh, GeForce Now? Uh, not sure. By the way, GeForce Now has a bit of an, up, has a bit of an update as well. Oh. The connection is much more stable. It's like an, an update that takes like 5 seconds, because it's, you know, it's the app, not not the games. Oh, that's good. But uh, this was the first time I logged into GeForce Now after the update, and I noticed that the background screen that they use is has been is remarkably crisper than it used to be. So I was like, wait. I went into a random game, Warframe, and I shit you not, this was the first time which I looked around in the, in the game as, and I saw and I saw you could not see a difference between this and the real game. You could not see it, because usually you could kind of see, you know, there's a little bit of a blur sometimes, where or the, the textures aren't that sharp. Also, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Yo.何してんだよ、それ。何って恋方だよ。守ってくれるって。いや、守るって言うのはモンスターがポップしたら倒してくれるとか。そういうことじゃないのか。いや、ヘルスレ、ヘルスレ。ゴードパテニアとかのサメの
you know, doing this the slow way, the way, the, the way in which I still have fun, but it's not that much of a grind, but I'm willing to put that extra work in. I'm willing to, you know, make it more of a job than, you know, an actual hobby. Because that's kind of, that's what, that's what they're saying, that's kind of the mentality you're supposed to have. Yep. Twitch and every other social media. It used to be fairly easy to get into and get famous overnight, but now you really need to make it an actual career. Because if you do make it, it will become an actual career. It's no longer just that weird thing people do for fun and get, maybe get money out of. If you do this right, this is going to be your livelihood. So, yeah, that's uh, interesting enough. But that means that, you know, obviously you're competing with people that every, pretty much every single kid, you know, they've had this dream where they want to, you know, get money playing video games. That's everyone's wildest dream. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Where I don't need an actual fucking job. I, just, I could just play fucking video games for a living and get money out of it. That's, I mean, that's, the, that's the one, you know, afterthought people usually have. But for most people, and that's why they make the mistake, that's their only thought. That's what they yep. want. And yeah, those but are usually the guys that don't make it because they they'll they'll force themselves to do it. They don't have a lot of fun. Their audience knows they don't have a lot of fun, and they and, and they end up losing whatever audience they but <laughs> they build up over time. So, whereas most people would say, you know, the whole ancient uh, tip of you're supposed to have fun, and they kind of laugh at it like, uh, yeah, well, well, if you only have fun, there's a lot more stuff you need to do. Sure, but having fun is still part of the equation here. Having fun, to me, is like one of the biggest parts. If you don't have fun, then why would you even do it? Well, yeah. If you don't enjoy it with your heart, then, like... Then there's no purpose to it, in that sense. Yeah. Then you're just going to, to, to live a sad and miserable life in that sense if you make it. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, what we want to avoid. Uh, there's been some conflicting uh, advice and some uh, conflicting like uh, pieces of evidence that I've procured to go alongside this. Because some people are saying that, you know, fun is the only thing you should care, uh, care about and others are saying that you know it, well, it's definitely important it's not as important as you think obviously it's, it's good to have fun they're not saying that you know you're not supposed to have fun and this is a job and that's where this ends but the whole treat it as a job kind of thing is still pretty pretty applicable because in the end that's kind of what you're doing just like a, a career in real life it's kind of built up in the same way you first you put in you put in some money to you know to get the education or to get the twitch equipment then you start working for absolute fucking pittance like your internships for years you, you put yourself through hell for yep. years only to then maybe just maybe get the job you wanted or get the audience you wanted. So saying that, oh, you're just supposed to have fun and you just see where you end up after a couple of years. Yeah, that's a that's a sure way of making sure that you're not gonna end up anywhere. So put that you know put that extra effort in. That's gonna make so much of a difference. And that's what I'm gonna keep in the back of my mind. Like I'm, this is obviously. This is going to be a grind, and this is, well, I'm trying to go and make it fun for myself. There are going to be days where you ask yourself, like, ah, oh, I'm really not feeling it today. Those are the days that you should go ahead and do your job anyway. Because that's, you know, that Twitch, once your life or your social media networking or influencing, that right there is your fucking job. It's like, if you stop doing it for a day because you feel bad, that's like your entire business shutting down for a day. That's not good. You that don't go true. to work, you, know, you don't get that amazing job and then just decide, oh, I'm not really feeling like it today, I'm not going to show up. Uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna get your ass fired. Yep. So you need to... Unless you're play. actually sick. Yeah, I mean, unless you're actually, like, really, really sick. But even if you're just a little sick, yeah, well, good fucking luck, you're still coming. Yeah. If, if it's a serious thing, then of course. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm definitely not shying away from the fact that while I'm trying to go ahead and do this the single most fun ways, it is going to be frustrating at times to not, to not see the growth you want it. 
and it's going to require a little bit of more extra effort than I initially imagined. Because, you know, I was kind of doing the whole, yeah, we'll just do it for funsies. Uh, use it for practice to see where we end up mentality. Which, you know, is still part of the equation here, but I'm not going to shy away from the fact that, okay, I'm going to have to kind of double down on this for a while. And even then, it might not even succeed, but then... I can really say that, you know what, I fucking tried, and I can, I can let this issue rest for the rest of my life. Yep. I kind of owe it to everyone that always told me. I kind of owe it to myself to at least give it a shot. But then give it a real shot. So this that includes, you know, getting that Twitter running, trying to, you know, gain some influence, gain, gain a little bit of an audience, and lure them back to Twitch. And from there, just you know, just, just lure, just lure them like, uh, like the cats or like little pieces of fish. Yeah. But, you know, another thing that uh, that was mentioned is, you know, the whole streaming for zero viewers is absolutely, completely unnecessary and detrimental to your, you know, to your, uh, to your goal. The the one thing I'll say about that is, well, sure, but I, I don't magically get two viewers in my stream, in my stream every single time, so. That'd be kind of nice, but yeah. But they're saying that obviously, and this makes sense because on Twitch exclusively, it doesn't really matter for other, other social media, but on Twitch exclusively, the more views you have, the higher you up, the higher you're up on the list. And on a less saturated game, the list is going to be smaller. So you make yourself look interesting, get yourself a viewer, and just just the one is usually enough. So like, a, like a friend or a family member to just tune in, and that'll bump you up the list quite high, because you'll see that there's a lot of guys usually put zero viewers, a lot of them. Yep. And those guys, sadly enough, they're not going to get any views. Because people, when you're browsing through a list, you're not going to click on someone that has zero viewers, because uh, there's probably a reason they don't, they don't have any viewers. Yeah, like if, the like like want... the like the list given like the highest of first. Like people don't scroll through a list at all as well. Usually, yeah. usually I mean, there are a couple, of course, but usually this is why you want a less saturated game because usually even the top streamers don't have an awful lot. But, and sometimes you know people with one uh, viewer it can be kind of interesting. People are like, oh shit, this guy just, probably just starting out only has one viewer. I'll try to be his second viewer and you know, see where this ends up. Usually I, I, usually I notice that, you know, the more viewers you have, the more you end up getting. When I when I have zero viewers, it takes a long fucking while just to get that one. But if you already have the one, the second doesn't take too long. Yeah, no, that is true. And obviously the second part is, you know, making sure that they stay. And this is, you know, where the uh, the, the streamer kind of comes into play. So no, no, yeah, that, that's where the, uh, the handcuffs come into play. Yeah, you have to basically glue them to, these, to the seats. And yeah. the whip, of course. Mm. Uh, this is where the, the next few tips kind of come into play. And one I'll have to keep in mind, and one you should kind of keep in mind. And not because I'm berating you or anything, because obviously, you know, you have said, you know, more often than not, that you are doing this mostly for fun, and that's completely fine. Yep. But one thing, one tip I'm pretty sure you can, you can use, the fact that... Uh, well, on the camera thing, that's all. That, that's an easy one. You, you, you really don't have to pay attention to that. Good grief! D this screen. That's a, that's a screen and a half. <laughs> <laughs> These type of scenes are just in here. Well then, <laughs> I've had wars. Yeah, no. Where it was all just right. bathrobes or towels. Well, at, least, at least they're still wearing bathrobes, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, if they would go for it, Twitch would, all, would not allow it. Exactly. But yeah, so obviously the... Uh, the whole, you know, the, the camera thing is an easy one. So just scrap, strap that to a location where, you know, your positioning just looks a bit more lively. Uh, another thing, one thing you've kind of got uh, going for you already. But make sure that your, uh, your surroundings, your room is representable. Make interesting shit happen on the background. Obviously, you've already got the poster there, so that's one thing. You've got that uh, that cabinet there that you can place interesting shit on. But all the cool stuff that you've got laying around your room, make sure that that's on screen somewhere. Uh, like to get people asking questions. Like that closet you see to the right. Yeah. That's for me, it's gonna... on the left. Yeah, but yeah, but it's on the right of the screen. 
that, that class up there, that's not going to win you much mu uh, much points. <laughs> not saying you should completely get rid of it, but you know, you make uh, get your camera to focus less on the closet and more on the interesting stuff you can put around it. Yeah, so the, it's the, the closet yeah, is literally just it's like storage for all the DVDs and games and such that I have. Yeah. There is yeah. no way I'm going to move that around. Yeah, you don't have to move it around, just get it off screen for a while. This is obviously more applicable to people that have, you know, in, uh, more interesting rooms. I've got a very small room here, and everywhere I put point my camera, there's always something ugly blocking it, and I can't really get rid of anything. But if you can, try, if you can make it, make your room look more uh, pleasant, do it. Like, uh, I've seen people completely black out their rooms, right? Just absolutely black it the fuck out. Get that. Get that uh, semi-expensive window cover that really just doesn't let any fucking light in, and then use those uh, the, like those LED lights, the colored ones, to kind of flur up your black your background, and that's gonna do a lot. Yeah, I don't like LED lights and such. Yeah, you know, it'll, it'll make your it'll make you as a streamer pop out more because just get like get the purple that you have got on the background. You don't need to actually look at the lights firstly because they're behind you. You don't give a fuck about the lights, but. Obviously, you're lit up by the light, by your lights, so they see you normally. But then you've, then you've got like the studio lights, the, the, the purple behind you. And that's gonna suddenly going to look oh. 10 times more appealing. I need to actually open up the laptop behind me and have that uh, play something in the background. Yeah, just have it like uh, put it on one of the shelves and have it play something cool. Um, literally, the flight ticket is on the laptop. Nice. The laptop is literally behind me. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can, Yeah, just set it up nicely. Get that, that little uh, tipped over box. You can kind of get rid of that. Maybe, maybe put some of the Lego figures on the shelves as well. Make it look pretty cool. Pretty cool and interesting. And then obviously the the big one, I'd say, is and one I'll have to kind of keep in mind as I get used to the whole yeah, streaming with a uh, camera t uh, deal. Is try to represent yourself as best as you can. And this is not trying to be fake. There's a reason, there's a difference between trying to be fake and presenting the best version of yourself. Because a lot of streamers, you'll see them, they go over the top with their reactions. They're like oh, yeah. almost street microphone. Like, oh my god, this is so exciting. Nobody's so excited about anything. Unless fucking Mr. Beast enters your stream and gives you the $10,000, 10, that's when you start screaming and crying. But then most other times, just behave you know, as you would normally yep. but kind of you know, be the be the version of yourself that you always wanted people to see you as okay. so if you got that camera try to look at the camera or do hand gestures or just express yourself your facial expressions clearly if you if you see if you say that something's really fucking awesome that happens in game have, have the you on the well on their face cam have it show that you really think it's awesome by your expression or your body language that's, you know, because I've, I've joked about this in the past where, where you're like in, in reacting to something like, holy shit, that scared the shit out of me. Meanwhile, your face is absolutely blank. <laughs> <laughs> you're, no, you're, but you're, like, that's a thing that could be you know, frozen in place. No, but like, <laughs> the image. No, but like that's the thing. Like, when it scares me, I don't show it, I feel it. Yeah, but that's kind of the thing, and you're going to have to find a way to make it, sh to make you show it. And people are saying, and I do believe this, is this is not an easy thing to suddenly start doing. If if you don't do it naturally, I kind of don't do it naturally, then it, you're gonna have to get used to it. But it's not, it won't be that you're faking yourself because you're still, um, you know, having the same reactions. You just need to express it a bit more. And it's definitely something that you don't just start doing, you need to kind of ease into. So try it first, mm. ease into it. And you have to kind of think to yourself, I'm not I'm not some guy playing video games. I'm a streamer, and there's a difference. The way you present yourself and the way you behave. Because obviously, like, like, like we mentioned before, people are not coming for the game, they're coming for you. Uh, this is also another point I'll make, is we want to make the, the, the face cam obviously a little bit more better to look at so maybe like make it a bit bigger and get a bit of a, like a nice little layout surrounding it now the layout i'll worry about myself you know, i'll make like two versions well, an orange one for me and a, and a, and a purple and one for you the purple so we've got that so yeah so we've got that unity so people can see you know that oh they've got a, they've got some similar features 
I've also gone and set, uh, put a uh, like a, the notification bar you have. I put that on my uh, screen. I still need to kind of edit it a bit to make it look cool, but I'm working on using that. Obviously, mine is orange, as you could suspect. Yep. Oh, uh, I've got the variant, by the way. They're gonna keep in that. It's if something happens, it'll pop onto the screen, and then it just fades away after a while, just to get that clean look I want. Because I'm not gonna go heavily into the overlays and stuff. Just really don't give a shit about that. I want my gameplay to look really clean, especially when I'm gonna do VR. VR is, gets kind of annoying when there's a lot of shit in the way. Yeah, no, I feel that. VR brings a whole other problem with it by, by itself. The fact that, well, I can't really use a face cam in VR. Because even if I'm sitting at my screen playing DCS or Elite, you're not gonna see my face anyway. So why bother? It's kind of gonna get distracting. So I won't, obviously I won't be playing uh, uh, VR exclusively, I'll just be doing a lot of it. And, uh, but I won't be doing that, obviously, exclusively. Yeah, when I get VR, I will actually still keep the face cam. Just so you can also see my head move and such. But like, that, that's when camera movements are going to be really weird to me. Yeah. But yeah, this whole yeah, you know, this whole streaming thing, like I said, I'm you know pretty sure I'm getting that point across now, but it's I'm gonna try to make this work as best as I fucking can. Just make it make sure that you now it's that we're we're giving this the the absolute Basically, you know, we get onto the field with our with our baseball bat doing a baseball game. We and uh, we just we try, at least fucking try, to hit that home run. It's not like, oh, I'm just standing here for fucking fun and just not swing at the ball. No, no, no. We're gonna, we're gonna at least try to hit that home run. Now, obviously, hitting the ball is one thing and knocking it out of the park is another. But, yeah, I'll be doing a little bit more research going forward, obviously, to really make sure that, you know, everything, every little bit of it, useful information that there's, that's available, we will take into account. Some of them we will, some of, we, some of them we will, some of them we won't, because the one thing we want to avoid is to come across as if we're blatantly copying someone. So we want to give our own spin to it, obviously. Yep. This goes again into why people should watch you, as opposed to watching other people. You need, to, you need to bring something interesting to the table, and that's completely fine. That was kind of what I expected anyway. But you need to bring something unique to the table. Meaning that, you know, you need to do something in your streams that sets you uh, up, uh, apart from others. And, you know, that's kind of to be expected. And this is something that, you know, no one can determine for you. You've got your own style, your own flavor, your own personality. And this is something that you'll probably develop as you start building an actual audience and i mean an yep. actual audience like at least four to five guys or people that show up regularly and with, without having them show up one at a time right like you have got a base a viewer base of at least five to ten people every single stream because when you start building up your actual audience you're going to get inside jokes with your audience at all and you're going to interact with your audience like uh, uh, little, little like uh, command games or give, uh, small little giveaways with point system that you can get. Like get in, get those uh, stream points that uh, I've got way too many of nowadays. And give them some actual interesting rewards to reward people for staying. Now at the moment we've got random emotes and choose emotes. Yeah, no, I I got rid of like a couple of them. Um, just because they were they didn't apply to me or because I just thought they were no. Like, there yeah. was that edit emote thing, and I was just like, it just looked, it just looked hideous to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, obviously I, I won't be getting those points for a while, because yeah, I'm pretty sure you need to get affiliated before you get those. Um... Because you, you, you've already got them. Yeah, but like, I, work. I don't know, like, you, I'll have to look at your stream uh, later on. Who knows, maybe you actually have them as well. Maybe. Like, I, I, I don't know what the requirements are, let me say it that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at like a YouTube tutorial about it, and this guy was like, Okay, so, uh, to, to turn these on, you need to go to this page, and then he clicked on the affiliate page. 
It's like, oh well, I guess that's not happening then. Yeah, but that's the thing. I never even turned them on. I did. I didn't select these because. Like, I don't like the Twitch point system. Why? Because literally the bot can tell you how many hours you have. The Twitch yeah. system can't. And this is why I, why I would personally say that the entire coin system that I have, for instance, is way better than what Twitch is doing. This is why I like my own bot. In, instead of, like, um, the other bot. Well, the other bot, like, uh, Nightbot does work as well, but, like, um, there's just something about having, like, a bot that you've named yourself as well that shows um, how much you, you, you like actually doing things like this. Because if you just have, like, your standard run-of-the-mill bot, like, everybody knows about the bot already. But having a bot that has, like, its own name and such... Or, for instance, what I do with... With that. It, it's those little fun commands that actually... They make it all work. And I don't think you can do that with Nightbolt, what I just did. Should I tell you why? Well. Because this text is drawn from a text document. I, I pull it from a text document, like it has four lines, uh, this one as well, like, this one, guitar, shoulder, uh, that is kinky, I guess. All three are different um, text documents. And it's all randomized. It will, it will pick a random line from that and it will just say it. Like, there, you can't really do that with Nightbot, from what I feel. Yeah, I get that. And that's one of the reasons why I actually uh, like the Drewbot. And it's not even hard to set up. You literally just make an account for it uh, and then use the Streamlabs uh, chatbot. Like, not the one in um, Streamlabs itself, not the one in, like, the uh, streaming program, but, like, the actual bot program. And the handy part is you can start up that bot whenever you want and wherever you want. Like, it is true, you have to actually start it up yourself every time, but... Well, it's literally just double-click. Accept, and then you wait for a couple of seconds and it has started up. Yeah. Not and every so often you need to actually get the, uh, need to request the code again. Because it does require you and the bot account both to be logged in. Well, it doesn't actually require you to be logged in. I think I think the bot only. But it will at times um, say that it's logged out and that you just have to log it back in. And it will ask for like... Um, what are those codes again then? Those... Uh, they had a very specific name. Verification code. Well, those as well. Uh, connections. The quaff code. Yeah. That, that, that really long string of numbers. It will just sometimes request that. Where well, it's like uh, not um, not, val not valid anymore. So like after a month or so, it, you just have to... Uh, uh, reactivate it. I mean, it happens. Yeah. 
Yeah, it happens. Like even now, it's just to be various universe across the graphics. I had some uh, like uh, things already explored, so I was like, sure, I'll just hand those over, and well, they're gone now. So I'm not really saying, seeing what people were talking about here. Maybe because I sold the whole page. Maybe I have to sell. Maybe it's like uh, one thing at a time. But uh, you just sell your most expensive thing, and you can keep selling that every, uh, again and again. But now I have to go and get myself more exploration data now. Because there has to be a way to get this to work. Unless it's already been patched, but I haven't seen any update yet. So. Yeah, when it gets to Twitch, I also try to, like, just stay on, like, a lot of random games. Just to, like, explore around, see what works well. Yeah. I mean, there's also games like Minecraft that I should just... That I just uh, don't do... Uh, don't ever do anymore on stream. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of uh, annoying. Because Minecraft, you know, it used to be... It, it kind of became one of those lesser popular games for a while. So you can get away with playing it. But now it's become over popular again. God damn it. Yeah, but that isn't it for me. It's it's more for me the fact that um uh, a lot of trolls come to it usually. It it's literally troll central at this point on, on Twitch. Yeah. Which is like, I, I avoid it, which is why, uh, regarding regrowth for instance, I just record that. I've recorded some today as well, like earlier, but I, I strictly do that off stream. Which also makes it easier for me to edit actually. Because I'm doing right now, I'm more like sitting on time and such, whereas... Uh, in other occasions, I'm not. Holy fucking shit. Apparently there's already a fleet carrier at the center of the galaxy. One day, guys. Motherfucker got there in one day. Well then. I've seen. I haven't actually uh, tried this yet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to keep a dedicated ship for it because obviously I want a ship with as much cargo space as you can possibly fucking can. Which will probably be a Type Nine because they're a cheaper to outfit than a cutter is. And just use that to go and get myself, you know, fuel whenever I need it. But I'm not. I'm not sure how, how expensive this tritium is if you want to just buy it. Because uh, I figured out that. And uh, other people know this as, uh, uh, as well now. This is how they make those amazingly far journeys so quickly. Because you can actually store almost unlimited fuel in your uh, carrier before you go away. So even though you only have like a certain amount of fuel in your tank, you can just uh, you know, donate tritium or sell tritium to your own carrier and it'll keep the tritium there. Uh, basically until its entire capacity is full and this is its like entire cargo capacity as opposed to just its tritium capacity well so then you can, you, you can put like several thousand tons of uh, tritium on your carrier and just make that super trip where you basically you make one jump after the other and these jumps are about 500 light years a piece obviously so you'll be going at a blistering speed you'll have to get a, get a timer up so you can uh, Keep track of when you're allowed to jump again. Because you know there's a cooldown obviously and a warm up time. But yeah. Pretty cool. So that's what we will be doing once we get our exploration chip up and running. The, 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 pro the one problem is, is uh, well, we don't know how this universe of quantum graphics is really gonna work. Is, is this even going to work? Because if so, that's going to absolutely basically overcharge exploration, I'd say. Because if, if we go out and we find 
against an Earth-like world, an undiscovered and Earth-like world that's terraformable. Broke the fuck out of that, and that's the single most expensive thing you can sell. That thing is about three, uh, three million a piece. And if you can just keep selling that thing over and 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 over it is technically a station that you can talk at, that is, you know, yours. It's, all, it's always pretty cool. I mean, I'm sitting in the hangar bay of what I can consider, like, my own massive ship, but that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, so guess why I want one as well, eventually. Not enough SP, for fuck's sake. My SP thing is also not charged. Oh, by the way, I, did, I, I may or may not have done something. Oh, God. Pretty cool. I'm worried now. This, uh, this is uh, Beat Saber related for when I wanted to go and stream that, which I probably will later today. If you're Ooh. Interested. I mean, I still have like two hours and ten minutes to go, so. I'm, I'm pulling like a. a I'm putting a double time today again as well. Uh. But I tried to keep it at like 3, 6, 9, 12, like those types of amounts. Uh, just because it's easier for me to handle. And easier yeah. for me to just edit and... You, uh, you basically quit around 10-ish. Right? Yeah. Right, well. That's kind of a problem for me, see, because... Uh... Usually, during the week, I have to shut the fuck up and, you know, don't do anything loud at around 11. So it'll give me a whole hour. Yeah, no, I can actually stop early, but I've been so tomorrow also have, like, um, at least more than three hours. No. Because that, that's just easier for me to edit and such, and then I, I know a little bit better, like, which session has what and such. That's why I keep it usually at either three or six hours. Loot. Gold. Knowledge acquired. quickly show this off with uh, my screen share before I pull this up on stream just to make sure that you know it's working properly. It could be handy, or yeah. VR, I'll also uh, switch over to the um, microphone that's mounted on the headset as opposed to the one on the, you know, on my actual talking headset. Just the microphone on the rift is a bit better. And, uh, you know, when, when I listen back to my own uh, footage sometimes, especially during VR, 
or when I raise my voice or whatever, you you kind of get that like that wind effect in your in the fucking my microphone. I mean, it doesn't really sound the greatest. Oh, I've noticed. Like yeah. I'm blow, like I'm blowing into my microphone. Like a yes. Fucking idiot. Obviously, that's because uh, I don't have one of those fancy filters, and also because the microphone just being absolutely shit. Pretty sure that the microphone on my former headset was actually better. It's kind of annoying because Kermit actually gave me this really big fancy uh, microphone set. The one that had like this, that, 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 like this really big tuner that go along with it, so I can like, adjust anything. It wasn't even a USB microphone anymore. It was one of those really fancy ones, like, almost a studio one. So I got home uh, with that, and my mom, I mean, I said that instantly claimed it for themselves. Finally, get a wordy microphone, and I'm, I, I'm not even allowed to use it. Why did they claim it though? Because uh, they want to do karaoke with it. What? What? Yeah. That kind of pissed me off as well. But you don't do that with an actual microphone though. I know, but. They, they've got like their own microphones, but they needed the tuner. To actually, they gave me the microphone back. The problem is that, uh, well, the microphone without the tuner is basically useless to me. But, uh, karaoke and you need a tuner for that. Like, I question that a lot. Oh, trust me, you really shouldn't because they sound awful. They really do need that tuner. Yeah, but... If you do karaoke, you don't do that for others anyway. You do that with each other. There is no point in having a tune if it's just for each other, if it's just with yourself. I know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be try I'll, I'll get, be get, trying to get them to part ways with it, but for now, no, it's still working. Yeah, so. Can I smash them into the ground? Can I steal the tuner back? I think you need to also change the microphone I on Discord. Duncan. Then they they're, they're still always going to be on, and that's so fucking annoying. Right, are you using don't, don't forget to also on Discord change the microphone because I was just about barely able to hear you. Hmm? I was just only barely able to hear you. Yeah, no, I actually had to, the headset off. So I was just trying to get the, the VR set on. Yeah, don't forget to also change the, the microphone and such in Discord. Yeah, well. Because otherwise it just won't work, obviously. No, otherwise I just cannot hear you at all. I have to go around and find the wind, the wind talisman. Okay.
Alright, for some reason, this is not working the same way it used to work, which is kind of annoying. Technically, it still kind of works, but this is definitely not the way it's supposed to be. Rip. So, I tried this initially, uh, you know, just yesterday. Worked fine. Then I tried it later yesterday, and suddenly all of the options that were available to me initially, they were gone. 